Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to another live Xanadu Gallery Art Business Academy online critique group session. Today is Wednesday, November 11th, 2020. It is good to be back here with you all um, in a critique session. Um, just quickly, uh, as we're getting started, a reminder that uh, next week, next Wednesday, will be an Ask Me Anything session. Um, so this is your opportunity to ask questions about uh, your work, um, about uh, principles and concepts we've talked about in these sessions, um, input you'd like to have, or any other question that you would like to ask a, a gallery owner. Um, so keep an eye out for the invitation for that early next week. It'll have a link to a form that you can use to ask those questions, and I'll look forward to that uh, conversation next week. Today, um, we get to meet another artist um, and uh, talk about some artwork, which um, I just love doing. I love these sessions. I love the opportunity to see the variety of different artwork that's being created, hear about the inspiration behind that work, um, and then talk about uh, what makes artwork great, talk a little bit about the business, um, take some suggestions, and, and have a great conversation. And our featured artist today is Cheryl Knight. And let me see if I can get Cheryl in here. Cheryl should be asking you to unmute now. And I'll say, uh, there we go. Good morning, Cheryl. Thank you so much for uh, joining us, for letting us look at your work. Good morning. Thank you very much. <laughs> And so um, to get started, Cheryl, uh, give us a little bit of, let's start with uh, where your studio and home are located. I live in um, the southern end of Santa Maria, California. It's a little pet area called Orchid, and it's in Santa Barbara County, and it's on the central coast of California, if you're not familiar with our- Kind of a bland, <laughs> ugly, boring area. Yes, as I yeah, it. it is. We live- uh, probably 15 minutes from the ocean. We do not live on the ocean. Uh, we're 15 minutes from Pismo Beach, if you've ever heard, heard of Pismo Beach. Absolutely. And um, we're surrounded by rolling oaks, rolling hills with oak trees and lots and lots of vineyards. And vineyards are everywhere. So I tend to paint a lot of vineyards. Um, I Let's see. Uh, yeah. Talk a little bit about uh, your your background, um, how you- uh, oh, Actually, I was born and, art. born and raised in California, um, but Northern California. I came down to Santa Barbara to go to a college and met my husband there, and uh, we have never left the county. <laughs> so I uh, raised our family here. Um, I did a lot of artwork in college, though I didn't art graduate with an art degree, um, but I've probably taken enough classes and things over the years that I should have an art degree. <laughs> but um, so in some ways I'm self-taught because what I feel like I learned in college was not actually the direction I go today, but it, it's all good background. Um, I started drawing and uh, painting and coloring, any kind, anything I could do as a really young child. I can't even remember kindergarten, um, you know, having my favorite thing was to put, do, the, do the drawings that they had. In the teacher. And are there other artists in your family or is there a creative gene there? Where did it come from? Well, I was, my mom used to draw a lot. She was very good and she'd always encourage me. And um, I had an aunt that painted a little bit. But other than that, um, my, my kids are very artistic in different directions. And uh, my son builds guitars, beautiful guitars that um, he designs himself. So that's an art. Um, oh, I've got, you know, it, it's just, it's just, um, I, probably mostly me, <laughs> but, yeah. but they all appreciate it. <laughs> and so. so after school, um, did you make your way directly into art or did you have a little bit of a roundabout path? I, I painted until I was about 26 and then I had children. I thought, this isn't going to work. Oil paint is just too messy <laughs> with kids. So I kind of put it away until they were like high school. And, um, and then when they were, by the time they were in college, I was pretty much painting full time. So my kids are grown and uh, I have been painting probably full time for close to 20 years. But I just looked up last night, the first gallery I went into was in 05. So um, probably painted, you know, for quite a few years um, before I actually, I, I, I ventured off in, I think in the late mid nineties into watercolor, just because I, that's one medium I had never done. 
and but I ended up when I started going into galleries, I was back in oil <laughs> because that's that's what they want. And so I, I am exclusively oil now, with the exception of I am doing a lot of gouache lately, but they're mostly just small studies that I turn into large paintings. And um, I've, I've enjoyed that. Okay, good. Well, let's um, jump in and look at your art. And Cheryl, as we look at your art, you can talk to us a little bit. Um, obviously, um, those of us who have already spent a little time um, reviewing your work know that uh, you're primarily interested in landscape. So talk to us a little bit about what drew you to the landscape and how your style has developed. I would say um, I've always loved the outdoors. I can remember that as a child. I mean, down to the point that I would trade my sisters their outdoor chores for their my indoor ones <laughs> because I would rather be outside. And um, I, I've just always enjoyed it. I love trees, I love mountains. And um, I, do, I do love the ocean, even though I'd rather live in the mountains than the ocean if I have to pick one of the two. That's just where I lean. Um, I'm most drawn to things um, you know, the, the landscape that has um, uh, the lighting and the shapes. Those are the, probably the two items that attract me the most to um, what I want to um, portray in a painting. And that's what inspires me. I paint plein air, um, but not all the time. I do a lot of studies outdoors and I've done that probably for, oh gosh, at least, at least 15 years and done a lot of plein air um, festivals and things like that. And um, most of these, some of these, this power painting right here, uh, Rock Creek Waterfall is actually up in the Sierras. And that's one of my favorite places to paint. And this is the Eastern Sierras. And if there's any California people watching, uh, they would know in the Eastern Sierras that uh, it's uh, um, just beautiful, <laughs> just beautiful. Anyway, um, oh, oh gosh, I have, I made some notes. I love color, which you can probably tell. Um, I tend to use a lot of palette knife and thick paint and um, bold color. Those are just kind of things that I don't know if I've always been that way or if it's um, what I want to say, if it's if that's something I've grown into, but uh, I've always appreciated it. And uh, so that's that's really um, been interesting. Um, I strive for variety and um, I've got a big light there that's really weird. I'm, I've got a window next to me that's crashing. We've got some of uh, that California sunshine <laughs> anyway, coming in on us. It's, it is. It's a sunny day. <laughs> and, and we were actually heading up to the Sierras today after we finish here. So um, uh, that's just something we love to do. Um, I Variety is a huge thing. And that's probably something I didn't always know. Um, I have, I've taken lots of workshops, probably like most of you watching or uh, over the years, and I've, I've got to the point that um, I've narrowed down to one mentor, and uh, I, just, I just follow this person's work. I've traveled um, to, to be taught by him um, several times um, and stay in contact, so it's, uh, uh, it's, he's, it's, he's just been very inspiring to me, even though and we don't- How do, um, talk to us a little bit about um, kind of the, the response you get to the work. What do um, viewers and, and collectors, um, what do they seem, what seems to resonate with them in your work? Um, well, because of where I live and the, where my, uh, the galleries that I um, am represented by, um, I don't think my work would go very well in Arizona. <laughs> it's very California. <laughs> I don't know, it, but it's, um, I, I, I probably sell t twice as many vineyard paintings as any other painting. Oh, really? And, yeah, that's oh, interesting. Yeah, it's not my favorite thing to paint because I've done so many. And some, a lot of get, um, most of my commission work happened to be vineyard paintings. And, um, but that's just what people love around here. And I'm, I'm okay with that. I just, I like the variety. I like to um, be able to do different things. Uh, I used to do a lot of still life, especially when I, in early years in watercolor, and I just did one recently yeah, that I'm um, entering in a show, but it's not my, um, it's not, I love still life. And I love, um, you know, doing figurative too, but I don't, it's, it's like the, I couldn't, I had felt like I needed to um, narrow 
my time and work in one area and I chose landscape because it was my favorite. Okay, so, good. Yeah, that kind of is a great segue into um, the, the, the first conversation I want to open up, which as we typically do is I'd love to get um, from those of you who are here in the live stream um, and in the chat, I'd love to get your reactions to the, um, the work that we've had and any feedback you might have about what you're seeing in terms of consistency and I think Cheryl just said some um, pretty important uh, words um, that, that uh, uh, we always talk about when it comes down to consistency. Um, but for those of you who would like to uh, jump in and give me some feedback, um, you can either, if you're in the video, you can throw your hand up so um, I can know to pull you in. Or if you're not in the video, you can scroll over and you'll see a hand icon at the bottom. And that lets me know you want to get in with a, uh, a comment. Um, and so let's, let, let's see what you have to say. And as usual, if I don't get volunteers, I will make volunteers out of you. Um, so let's get some feedback. Juanita, um, if I can get you in, it should be asking you to unmute. And if you'll just scroll over, oh, maybe we've got you okay. frozen. Oh, there we um, go. Now I'm, I think I've got you. There we go. I really like uh, your work, Cheryl. And, um, but I'm seeing the most life and the most... Um, it just seems like that your landscapes, not the vineyard painting, seem to come to life more. And I think, excuse me, your passion for that. Oh, Juanita, it seems uh, like uh, we may have a little I bit of a slow also, connection. They're very lively. Okay. I, I, but I think we got the gist of it that Tim, um, you feel like the the pure landscape so, anyway, have I like the them, most but movement I think the, and energy. Yes, and that and uh, most connection. Okay, good. Um, and Cheryl, would, would does that resonate with you? And do you feel you, you already mentioned that? Uh, I, I get excited when I know I'm going to paint something um, that I want to paint that I'm passionate about. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, and that's an interesting interplay, right? Where it um, comes out. Yes, and if you're doing something because you know you have to do it, or it's a it's a commission. <laughs> Or, you know, or the gallery wants one that's going to sell for sure, then um, I'll do it. But it doesn't mean I love doing it. <laughs> you know, well, I have to really hunt for the right vineyard to be excited about what it painting it. You know, I, it, I, I mean, I believe me, I look at an awful lot and I've got probably 10,000 photos of, of vineyards. But um, no, I, I, I really do probably my my scenes, like the one with the fall trees, it's just a small painting. Um, that's from Wyoming. And I just, I loved it. This, it's the one, uh, yeah, it, it didn't take me long because it just came out so easy <laughs> because I enjoyed it. Anyway, it's all palette knife. And, and uh, so, um, Cheryl, I, 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 and, and Juanita, th thank you for that. And I think this is a, a very interesting discussion for us to have because, um, uh, you know, we say that uh, the, the, the pure landscapes um, ha seem to have more going on and more vibrancy and more excitement. And, and we like them better than the, uh, the, the, than the vineyard scene that we're, that we're seeing here. But it seems that your collectors have a different opinion than all of the rest of us. Um, <laughs> as you say, you're getting, they're seeing the, the vineyards and they're falling in love with those and something there is resonating with them in a very strong way. And boy, is this important to understand, um, you, you know, when we're thinking about, when, you know, when we're stepping away for a minute from the passion and the excitement and the joie de vivre mm -hmm. of creating artwork, and we start thinking a little bit about that interplay between artist and viewer and collector mm -hmm. that, um, you know, certainly you want to be doing what you're passionate about and be doing pieces that you're excited about. But at the same time, it, it would be foolish of us to ignore the feedback that we're getting from our clients um, and, and our buyers. And if they are saying, Cheryl, we want more vineyards, um, mm -hmm. you, you know, you've got a strong motivation then to create for them because they are seeing something in your work there that is just really speaking to them. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I think that um, you're, you're doing a good job in terms of keeping a balance and not saying, okay, I give up. I'm only going to paint vineyards from now on yeah. um, because um, certainly that, that could become tiresome and, and could, you mm -hmm. could start to then lose the spark of creativity in that work if that were all that you were doing. Um, but at the same time, 
um, I would discourage you from saying, oh my gosh, I can't do another vineyard. I just can't make it happen. I, you know, and, and giving up on that because you, you've got something that is bringing joy and excitement. And one would think that a lot of the people who are buying those vineyard pieces, um, yes, it's the work and it's the technique and, and the composition that are speaking to them, but it's also very likely the experience that they are having. They've traveled to your area or to, right, to the, yeah. the location where the gallery is. They've gone to wine tastings. They have felt mm -hmm. the romance of the vineyards. And so that artwork is resonating and echoing that experience that they've had. Um, and, um, you know, you're helping um, fulfill a, a, uh, a desire that they have for a piece of artwork to remind them of that experience. That's true. That's, that is really true. And I think if I was to um, venture outside of California and look for representation, I would probably not be painting vineyards for whoever, wherever that might be. And, um, and, and that's a probably maybe a long-term goal. Um, I do have one gallery up in Carmel that I, that I, uh, represents me and I don't, they don't take any vineyards. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a refreshing, <laughs> the one that you saw the ocean scene, that's Big Sur. I don't know if you've ever been to Big Sur. Yeah. Um, it's uh, just South of Carmel. It's right along the highway there and it's gorgeous country, but she, this gallery owner wants nothing, but anything from Monterey County, <laughs> which is an, an ocean. I do a lot of cypress trees for her and, um, and it's fine. And, and she does good. So, so I get a little bit of variation there, but um, the rest of my galleries are in San Luis Obispo County and Santa Barbara County. And that's what they like. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so I, you know, I pull in my variety, but um, it, and it works, it, you know, it, it really works. And I, got paintings that I love that may, uh, you know, may never sell. Um, this, you know, this, this waterfall one, that one was very fun to do. And it's um, actually won some awards and been in a couple of national shows, but it hasn't sold. <laughs> so so yeah. that's interesting to me. So, you know, I don't know. It, and that doesn't mean anything, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I would echo that, that um, there's just, there's so many dynamics at play, um, you, you know, that if we try and second guess what the market is going to respond to um, and how closely the market is going to, um, you know, kind of be in line with, with your primary interests or, mm -hmm. or the direction you want to go in can be a challenge. I, I think you do... Um, uh, it, it's a good idea to be constantly looking for opportunities to expand representation um, because every market is going to have its own different dynamic. Yeah. And, um, uh, you, you, you know, interestingly, it, though it wouldn't work in my gallery, um, if you were to visit the galleries in Scottsdale, you would actually see a um, decent number of artists who are doing work that is in a very similar vein, California impressionistic. Oh, okay. Um, and, and they do sell well in, in Arizona, um, you know, and, and I see that style in um, galleries that I visit in Colorado and, and uh, Jackson Hole. And so, um, you know, it, it, always worth exploring and kind of seeing, um, you know, who might be interested in the work and then um, writing those dynamics. Um, and, and it's likely that each of those galleries, as you mentioned, the gallery in Carmel might say, Cheryl, we like what you're doing, but we really like X, um, you know, your coastal scenes or your yeah. vineyard scenes. And so um, that, that can then really help keep the, the, the mix interesting and um, fresh. Um, now, in terms of um, consistency in the work, um, I, 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 I don't want to belabor it. We, we always talk about how consistent is the work and, you know, can we tell, can we see the artist behind the work? Is it clear that it's all been done by the same um, through the same artistic vision. And I think in, in this case, it's pretty easy to see that, yes, that's the case, mm -hmm. that your style and, um, you know, even though there's some variety in terms of subject matter, your style and technique, your treatment of the work um, and, and your palette um, present a consistency that if we saw all of these pieces and additional pieces that we've seen on the website hanging together, we would not have any challenge believing that um, the, the work was created by the same artist. How much do you um, think about that, Cheryl, as you're um, engaging in new work? Um, 
you know, how much of an effort are you making to say, well, I want to make sure that this may be a new place that I'm visiting or, or new subject matter. Um, mm -hmm. How do I make sure that it fits with the rest of the work that I'm creating? Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Um, uh, you know what? I I just I guess I don't really stop to think about is this consistent with my work. I I look for what excites me when I or inspires me as I you know looking around for what to paint, and and normally it's it's the same ideas that do, and so that automatically would bring consistency. You know, um, if there is not a lot of light, I don't paint very many foggy days. <laughs> this this uh, ocean one has a little bit of fog in the background, um, but mostly I I don't I love clouds. I don't mind. I do a lot of big sky scenes, and that's those are fun too. But I look for shapes that are so interesting, and if I don't have interesting shapes and good light on on something on part of the subject. Um, it, 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 I don't want to paint it. You know, it's to me, it's kind of a waste of canvas and paint and time. So I, you know, I want to put my time into what what is most exciting. I do find that the more I paint, and this is probably true for all of you artists, the more you paint, the more critical you will become of your own work. I find myself, you know, I think I'm done with something and I go back and re-critique it myself and I'm going, oh my goodness, I should need to change that and that and that. One of the hardest things is seeing a painting that I maybe sold five, 10 years ago and I'm going, oh, I wish I could get that back and redo it, <laughs> you know? But that's all part of our artistic growth and um, artistic growth can be painful because we become harder and harder on ourselves as we grow. When we're starting out, we think everything is wonderful and oh, look, I painted this. <laughs> but as you get old, uh, you know, older and painted longer, you go, oh my goodness, that's just not right. You know, and as you look at other artists' work constantly, you're constantly seeing things that you would, um, you know, you know it right away what you like and what you don't like in the painting and what draws you in and, you know, all of that. And so it's, um, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a journey. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's look at um, your the presentation of your work. Um, and, and I've just got the, the three images here. W would you say that this is a fairly typical presentation in terms of um, how you're framing the work? Um, and, and talk to us also a little bit about the scale, the range of scale of work that you're doing. Um, I do um, frame, I do frame all my work. Um, I do have reproductions and a lot of, you know, I don't, I don't have everything scanned and reproduced, but some of my work I do. And when I reproduce it, I'll often do it on a, you know, the deep gallery, uh, gallery wide ones without a frame. And, and I like that too. So I like it equally, but I've just, I think I've always gotten into framing. I tend to use a lot of um, black and gold frames. Um, I do, which is kind I, of a traditional plein air. I, um, I would say I'm traditional. I do a lot of gold frames too. Um, just recently started using some nice gold leaf frames, but they're pretty pricey. <laughs> so you have to be able to get the price back out of them. But um, no, I, I, I would say I'm very traditional. Um, I don't know that I would call myself a realist. I would say I'm more impressionistic, but um, uh, and I'm not a tonal, I'm not a, what do you call it? A colorist. I'm, and I'm not a tonalist. I'm something in between. <laughs> so. Yeah, excellent. Um, just my, just and, style. But I do, I do sign the back, usually write where the painting's from, um, put on a bio, just like you see on this picture here. And, uh, and I, they're all numbered with my art solid number. I've been doing that for good. years. <laughs> excellent. So. Good. Yeah. Um, we, we don't spend a lot of time talking about that uh, here, but uh, certainly um, cataloging and inventorying may not be the sexiest part of the business that we're in. It's, um, it's, but yeah. uh, as you get, uh, you know, as you're showing in multiple galleries and, and artwork is moving around, boy, it becomes ever mm -hmm. more critical to have a good system in place and to be consistent it's, about it's your efforts important. to and it's, catalog it's and inventory the work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it, but it was good. I heard you talk um, when I was in Scottsdale a few years ago for a show um, and you came and talked to the artist 
and talked about Art Sala. And that's, oh gosh, I don't know. I don't, whenever, I don't even know, is Trailside still there? <laughs> uh, they're not here anymore. That was four or five years ago. Okay, so that's um, when I was there. It was at Trailside yeah. Gallery and you spoke. It was an AIS show. And um, it's, uh, and that's when I heard about Art Sala. So I started doing it then, but yeah. So. Awesome. Well, let's um, keep staying in that vein, kind of thinking about organization and business. Let's talk a little bit about pricing, um, how you've developed the values of your work. And I had a comment um, from Linda uh, via the, the feedback form before, and she says the pricing seems a little inconsistent, varying from five to seven dollars without a clear sliding scale, might be in part from the gallery. Um, but she encourages a review of it, which, which kind of, so in other words, Linda is doing a little reverse engineering on your pricing, um, right. trying to figure out uh, how you came to, to the values that you came to. So talk to us a little bit about that. What is your, your process for um, uh, valuing the work? Usually, and, and that was really perceptive. It Was that Melanie you said? Uh, Linda. Linda. Pardon? Linda. Melinda. Okay. That's very perceptive because I do price between five and seven dollars. It depends somewhat on my framing. It depends on um, somewhat the hours and the labor. It depends on um, the size. Sometimes the smaller the size, the, the higher the dollar, which makes sense. And the bigger the painting, then your, your price per square inch, you know, you, it goes down a little bit. It also depends. Um, I try and be as consistent are fairly consistent among my galleries. Although um, I, my Carmel gallery, doesn't matter what price I put on it, she wants to up it. So um, it's uh -huh. like, if this one right here that you see at the, the uh, Big Sur, uh, that's going to her in about a week or two. And um, she, you know, she I, put, I told her 2,800 and she says, she thinks it's too low but if I put it in another gallery, the same size, it'd be probably be probably be twenty two hundred. So I don't know what I put on this one when I turned it in, but that's yeah, twenty two. Okay, well she's gonna be it'll be at least twenty eight when it goes up there. So that ups it even more. But um, that's just she wants to have enough leeway. She, well, she wants it to you know go with all her other artists, and um, and and she sells very well for me. I I can't complain. But I feel like if I go in my other galleries at the same price, and this is a tough question because I struggle with it all the time. I'm I'm so I'll be above all the other artists, and so that that's a drawback too. So I have to find something that works, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's um, it's it's always it's a dilemma. <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. And and does that answer your question? It, it does, and I think that um. You know, certainly um, uh, it is one of, uh, it, when I'm having conversations with artists, um, either through the blog or I'm meeting artists and, and we're talking about their art business and their work, pricing is certainly one of the, the biggest challenges. I'm, I'm a big advocate of, as you say, kind of aiming for as much consistency as you can in the work. Um, you, you know, that it helps avoid problems with Right. Um, you know, especially as a gallery owner, um, I don't want someone coming in and seeing your work in my gallery um, and maybe even buying a piece and then going online and seeing it in another gallery at a lower price point. Um, you, you know, it can lead to certainly lead to some challenges. With that said, though, um, you know, there are uh, with within a certain range, um, there is some flexibility um, on, on price points, um, to fudge up a little bit or down a little bit. Um, uh, it sounds like your gallery in Carmel is, is trying to push that to whatever limit, uh, they can. Um, yeah. and, uh, it, it can work. Um, but, but ultimately you, you would hope that, um, you know, as you continue to expand your work and get into more galleries and, and the market for your work grows, Right. Um, that you can kind of sustain those ever higher and increasing values across all of sure. your different galleries. Sure. Yeah. Um, certainly it would make sense. And, and if you just kind of think about the, the mechanics of supply and demand and, and creating, uh, I've got to imagine if your Carmel gallery is selling pieces at 2,800 or 3,200 and they're selling them regularly, they're probably going to be the ones that get, uh, you, you know, your most attention and that you're going to be working hardest to make sure that you keep them 
well supplied and it then becomes a little bit more of a challenge right to keep work going into the galleries that are selling at lower price points um exactly. and, and so over time um the, you know the the market wants to stabilize it wants to have consistency in in pricing um and you know so if you're actively pursuing relationships with galleries and actively um and and those galleries are actively generating sales and working to increase the value of your work um the the over time the, the pressure is going to kind of steadily increase right to be more and more yeah. consistent at the higher end of those Absolutely. those values yeah yeah it's it's a, it's it's a challenge and and um i was in a gallery the other day bringing a painting in and it happened to be a vineyard painting <laughs> and um the 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 people asked me saw me bring it in this couple and they said um well can we buy this from you direct i says no you know even though it just arrived at the gallery the gallery gets their portion i would never ever ever undercut a gallery i i believe they earn every penny of their commission uh, you know, because they've got all the overhead. I mean, rent is horrible. I just, I never want to compete with them. I, I, I don't like to sell on my own much. Um, I, I like to let them do all the selling. I want to keep them in business. <laughs> and that's just been my attitude. So, but the people bought it. <laughs> and there it was early in the gallery, you know, a, not even a day. <laughs> and um, it was, it was a nice sale for me. It was a nice sale for the gallery. And easy. Well, sales. Cheryl, you're not going to hear me argue at all. In fact, I'll give you a big amen and hallelujah, obviously, um, <laughs> amen. you know, that, that partnership and the partnerships that you're going to have with your, your galleries over time, um, you, you know, just it, it's a, a, an ever increasing kind of compounding um, value to your personal art business to be able to have those relationships mm -hmm. continue to grow. And you think about a situation like that um, where someone is, is trying to buy maybe directly from you and could you do it? Sure. Would you make extra profit for having done it? Yes, you might. But what if the gallery discovered that uh, clients who had met, you know, found out about your work through their gallery, then circumvented them and, and bought from you? Of course, it'd just be devastating to that long-term relationship. And on the flip side, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, if they find out that, hey, these clients met the artist and could have bought directly from the artist, but the artist directed them back to us, that is, it really helps to cement and, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, increase that relationship. And, yeah. and then, of course, the benefit that you have is that uh, that work showing in that gallery is getting a constant stream of exposure, their mm -hmm. sales expertise, et cetera. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah uh, I, again, just, just would echo the importance of constantly thinking about how you can cement those relationships. Now, I, I do have, and we have time to get to just a few comments about your work. Um, the, the, uh, we'll take a few that were submitted uh, online and then um, invite those of you who are in the panel to jump in with any comments or questions. I will tell you that uh, I, I can't share all of the, the feedback that came in, but I'll tell you that there was a lot of, um, a, a lot of this sentiment um, that Melanie shares with us, which is, um, the work is professional, has beautiful impressionistic technique. It's stunning and captures the essence of her subject matter. Um, I just kind of heard over and over and again in the comments um, nice. uh, how impressed uh, viewers were uh, and members of the, the critique group were with um, the, the, the execution of your work. Um, and um, obviously, uh, you know, beyond our comments, uh, you've also got the proof in the pudding, so to speak, where the work is out there, it's being seen and, and collected. Um, and, and so just a lot of validation for the work. Um, I did see a couple of comments in the chat um, talking about the vineyard scenes. Um, and, and in fact, maybe if I could just have some of you jump over and, and share what your thoughts were some impressions about what you might think about doing to uh, jazz up the um, uh, uh, vineyard scenes or make them more exciting or, or experiment with them so that you're as excited to do them mm -hmm. as you are to, uh, to do the other landscapes. Anyone want to hop in with some comments on that question of how we, um, you know, what, what might be done to bring some more excitement in life? Uh, Melanie, I think I see I've got you here. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Um, uh, Cheryl, your work is just absolutely stunning. Just absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Um, 
And I, I'm an abstract painter, so I'm very, very drawn to, to the looseness, your impressionistic style. And so your vineyards, um, well, even I know Big Sur is a real popular one, but I have so much respect for the looseness you get when you have that passion. Mm. So if there's a way you could just transfer um, some of that looseness to your vineyard paintings, maybe uh -huh. they would excite you more because your, your style and your technique is incredible. It's really, okay. really beautiful. I really appreciate that. Thank you. That's, that's a good comments. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. And I think I, oh, go ahead, Cheryl. Go ahead. No, I'm, I just said, I, that's what I wanted to do this for is I want to know where to go. Cause you, you know, you, you want to see what other people think, especially other artists as much as, as much as, uh, you know, um, collectors and stuff, you want to know what other artists think because they have a good eye. <laughs> so and I, I got a comment, um, from Rana about this too. She says, here's a weird idea. Try painting a vineyard with your non-dominant hand. Um, even if just the first layer. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I'm, I'm writing this down. <laughs> Excellent. Um, anyone else want to jump in with any other comments? Um, and, and I've got some additional feedback. I've got, looks like I've got a hand. Casey, um, let me see if I can get you in. Casey should be asking you to unmute. Good morning, Casey. Good morning. How are you? Great. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, nice to see everybody. Really lovely work, Cheryl. I really enjoy it. I used to live in California and it's very evocative for me to look at your pieces. And remember my trips back there to the coast and my time in the mountains. So bravo to you. Um, I did have a question for you, but I'll set that aside for one moment. You were talking about trying to get more inspired about scenes that don't really excite you. And I recently experienced that myself, working in an area that is um, a little bit unfamiliar to me and that just didn't really light me up. Um, I decided to give myself a time limit. And I know you know this, paint faster, bigger brushes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you give yourself, a, but you have to like really mean it. You can't say, oh, I'm only going to work for 40 minutes and then give yourself an hour and a half. You know, it has to be legit. And if you do that at least once, you know, you may find that you're looking at things in the scene <clears throat> in such a way that they become so important that they actually generate a little bit of internal excitement. At least that's what happened for me. Great. And, I, and I got a couple of very nice paintings out of it and they sold at the show. So, you know, yay. So you know, it worked for me, maybe it'll work for you. You've got all the tools in your toolkit. Um, I would say anything to change it up a little bit or uh, another thing I'll sometimes do if I'm feeling a little bit jaded is I'll change my palette. I'll limit it. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll switch my, I don't know, I'll take the UM off and I'll just use cobalt for a day. Or I'll, you know, take off the king's blue and put on phthalo, you know, God help me. Right. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, just something to change it up a little bit. And I think yes. if you, you can get a little more excited about the process, mm -hmm. that it will take away the pressure to have a scene that absolutely floats your boat. I mean, ideally that's what you want, but um, right. you know, I've, I've worked with so many really wonderful artists, um, both as, as, you know, as a student and just an admirer and a watcher and, you know, occasionally as an instructor, somebody will show up in one of my workshops and they're like, I'm, I'm like, why are you here? They're so amazing. And what I see over and over again is that you don't absolutely have to have a stunning scene to mm -hmm. produce a stunning painting. Right. You just don't. I mean, look at Dave Sandianis and Bill Kramer and, you know, mm -hmm. some of these Western Impressionists, you know, the California Impressionists that I think this is a movement and it's happening right in front of our eyes. Very right good. in front of our eyes. And you're a part of it. How amazing is that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, bravo to you. It's wonderful to see your work. I really love what you're doing. I hope, you know, the little tips maybe give you a little bit more inspiration. The other thing I wanted to ask you was how long have you been in your galleries? Are these long-standing relationships? Have you worked at opening you know, relationships with any new galleries recently? And thank you for your tips on pricing. I found them very, very cogent and very applicable and for your remarks awesome. on galleries. Thanks, um, Casey. Yeah, thanks guys. Uh, yes, yeah, Cheryl. Like 
Thank you, Casey. That was, those were wonderful suggestions. I totally appreciate it. And um, but um, I'm very loyal to my galleries. So the one that I went in in 2005, I'm still there. <laughs> and um, it's in um, the newest one is probably oh, maybe three years. And um, I, I maybe, yeah, maybe a little less, but around, yeah, I would say somewhere between two and three years and then um, everything in between. <laughs> and so um, how is your, um, you know, if you look at your kind of how much work you're producing each year, um, are you kind of at a stasis where you're just keeping up with those? I think you mentioned you had six galleries that you're working with. Are you kind of keeping up with just kind of keeping up with that? Or are you building up a little excess inventory? Um, I, I have, I've got quite a bit in inventory and I do move things around. That's a big job. <laughs> I did two moves this week from, you know, gallery to gallery and and in fact, the vineyard that sold just this weekend that I was talking about that I was just running into a gallery. I had just picked that up from another gallery that they decided um, it was one in Pismo Beach and they thought, oh, I think we'll just stick with beach scenes. I said, okay, yeah. <laughs> so I took it out. But um, so, so I do move things. Um, and um, right now I've, I've got, I've got a probably, I just came off a featured show. So that always gives you some inventory. You paint like crazy getting ready for it. So, you know, um, and it's been, a, you know, for all of us, a strange year, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That may be the understatement of our entire session today. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so a lot of galleries are having to sell more online than, than in person, but uh, I, and I still can't imagine buying a large, uh, a painting with a sight and scene myself, but that's the way it is. Yeah, definitely <laughs> happening. Well, um, I, I have, number of other comments. And in fact, I'm going to forward some of these comments to you, Cheryl, because we've, we've run out of time to, to share them here. A, a, a several interesting comments from photographers um, about yeah. compositions and, and colors. Uh, I definitely want to forward those to you because it starts a, another interesting conversation about thinking about um, uh, the, the composition from a photography standpoint. Um, but I just want to thank you, Cheryl, for agreeing to um, share your work with us, for giving us the opportunity um, to take a look at what you're doing and hear a little bit of your background. Thank you so much. I, I to totally appreciate it. And um, this was it, this was an honor. And I love getting any um, even even very critical things. I want I want to I want to grow. I want to improve. And you can't do that if you don't let people critique what you do. So I appreciate it. And hopefully in the next year or so, I'll be able to stop in and see you. I have a granddaughter we'll forward to it. college in Phoenix. <laughs> yes, so. I, uh, I would recommend um, anytime between November and April. That'll be a great time for you. Oh, really? Visit us, uh, <laughs> when the weather's nice over here. Um, yeah, yeah. At that yeah. time of year. Exactly. <laughs> November to April. I'll write that down. She, All right. She's a freshman at Grand Canyon University. Oh, excellent. So, um, I need to go visit her. <laughs> well, thank you, My Cheryl. My stepdaughter and... is in administration at Grand Canyon University. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh really? Oh, it's a small oh, world. Yeah, sorry, Jason. Her name is Emily no, Pottinger, a... and she's in the education department. Oh, she's great. She's responsible Emily, for, what was the yeah. last name? Have her, if she's in that area, have her look her up, Emily Pottinger, or you can friend me on Facebook and, oh, okay. and you'll I'll see it. And Emily time. just had our second grandchild, so... Oh, congratulations. <laughs> well, I'm going to college. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so, so, sorry, Jason. Um, super. Oh, not at all. Thank you. And, and um, thank you to everyone for um, joining us for another session. Again, a reminder, next week is an Ask Me Anything session. So get your questions ready. Um, hopefully today's conversation and the conversations we've been having over the last few weeks has sparked a, uh, some, some mm -hmm. curiosity and, and um, I look forward to answering those questions. Uh, take care, everyone. Have a great week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Right. Thank you so much.